all right good morning y'all you already know what it is another video from nicole this one's coming from science alert if i can get my screen right <laughs> How y'all doing? Welcome back to my channel. If you have not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. I will be putting the link to this video um, article in the description box. You'll have my video there. And I'll try to put a link to my other video about Neuralace or Neuralnet software that they want to use, um, which will they say help people with brain injuries and that relates to this article because now they have connected the brains of three people enabling them to share thoughts i also have information from darpa that i'll be sharing in another link so in this article neuroscientists have successfully hooked up a three-way brain connection to allow three people to share their thoughts and in this case, they're able to play a Tetris style game. So the team thinks this wild experiment could be scaled up to connect whole networks of people. And yes, it's as weird as it sounds. Much respect to Wu-Tang. You just heard Method Man coming out with the cream cash rules everything around me cream get the money and this is pretty much what this is about if you think about it at a basic level this is what it's about so the way this system works is you have a combination of electroencephalograms or EEGs that are used to determine the electrical impulses and indicate brain activity so they can record that brain activity they also use transcranial magnetic stimulation or TMS where neurons or nerve cells are stimulated using magnetic fields so if you listen to anything that Keith Newsom has talked about he has said this ad nauseum that most of these things deal with light and magnetics or force magnetics is nothing but force Electroencephalograms use electricity and electricity is controlling how that force moves back and forth. Controlling whether you whether something is on or off, whether something is polarized or unpolarized, and the people behind the system have dubbed it brain net or you can call it neural net or sky net they all talking about we gonna put our data in the cloud right the only clouds I know are the clouds in the sky so it's another word for saying sky net right so you can eventually be able to connect people's minds together with this technology, even across the web. But apart from opening up strange new methods of communication, BrainNet could actually teach us more about how the human brain functions on a deeper level. Here they present BrainNet, which to our knowledge is the first multi-person non-invasive direct brain-to-brain -brain interface for collaborative problem solving why would they need a system like this for problem solving why do they need to have you these are just questions i ask why do they need to have more than one person connected at the brain to problem solve you know it sounds like something that could be used for military purposes as well so they go into the experiment they ask the participant to stare at one of two flashing LED lights at either side of the computer screen. One was flashing at 15 hertz and the other was flashing at 17 hertz. And those uh, flashing produced a different signal in the brain and the EEG machine could pick up on it. So what they did was they put um, basically a skull cap with electrodes 
that can determine how your brain is receiving the information and how another person's brain is picking up the information and responding to it. So the phantom flashes of light in the receiver's mind are known as phosphenes. A receiver couldn't see the whole game area, but had to rotate the falling block if a flash, a light flash signal was sent. So everybody knows how Tetris works. You have this panel, you have a bunch of shapes that are falling and you have to rotate them in order to fit them into that, that space at the bottom as it builds up. And the goal of the game is to have less open spaces as the, um, the uh, polygons fill up the space. They did 15 people um, for this, this study. They used 15 people. They found an accuracy level of 81.25%, which is decent for a first try. To add a layer of complexity to the game, the senders could add a second round of feedback indicating whether the receiver had made the right call. Receivers were able to detect which of the senders was most reliable based on brain communications alone, which the researchers say shows promise for developing systems that deal with more real-world scenarios where human unreliability would be a factor. So they not really trust the humans to make decisions. They trust in the system to learn from the humans and make the decisions for you. And while the current system can only transmit one bit or flash of data at a time, the team from the University of Washington and Carnegie Mellon University think the setup can be expanded in the future. The same group of researchers has previously been able to link up two brains successfully, sending participants to play a game of 20 questions against each other. Again, the phantom phosphine flashes were used to transmit information. In this case, yes or no. So phosphine is based on phosphate. Phosphate being an element that is negatively charged. So when, once again, when Keith talks about things going from negative to positive, he means that. Like phosphate is also found in your DNA. Phosphate is what makes your DNA negatively charged. When you run DNA on a gel, to analyze data you run it from negative to positive because opposites attract so your brain of course has negative positive charge but more positive charge when you're when you're conducting cognitive activities it becomes positive phosphine is negative so negative will attract to the positive and that's how they get the signal the more positive your brain is responding to the negative charge of the phosphine is based on like that's how they know whether you saying yes or no you know so they it's a lot more to it than that i'm simplifying it obviously but i hope that you all read through some of the green uh, excuse me the, the blue um the blue uh links they have here they think that their results will raise the possibility of future brain-to-brain -brain interfaces that enable cooperative problem solving by humans using a social network of connected brains. So this is just an article about how they're connecting three people together by their brains. And there are other articles such as um, this one I got mentioned earlier about DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. And this is not like no secret conspiracy theory bullshit. This is coming straight from their website. You can see the link in the top. DARPA.mil slash news slash events. Okay, so in this article, they talk about accelerating the exploration of promising artificial intelligence concepts. This was published this year, July 20th, 2018, this new effort will expedite pioneering AI research, rapidly moving from idea to award. This looks like the neural lace concept of a uh, blueprint, hexagonal um, neural lace concept, where is everything's connected, hexagonal shape. That is, this is just a computer accelerated, you know, uh, computer generated um, image 
of what neural lace or how AI connects together. It's also an image indicating like how universes connect to one another, how we connect to each other. They want to accelerate the third wave. So what is the third wave? The third wave is what they're talking about in this article where they have down here um, DARPA's five decade streak of pioneering groundbreaking research and development in AI. Past DARPA investments facilitated the advancement of the first wave, rule based. So that means dogma. Dogma is your didactic basic concepts of canonical or um, uh, general, um, well established concepts that's the first wave rule based based on rules newton's first second third law of thermodynamics for instance the way the rules of balance the rules of justice justice is balance is a, is a concept of justice mayat for instance rule base is based on gravity anti-gravity matter anti-matter second wave statistical learning based so statistics comes in with math math every every symbol every numeral every integer has a frequency has a um, conceptualized energy associated with it using statistics to um, prove or disprove the first wave using statistics to prove or disprove whether you can have anti-gravity in a environment of gravity. You see what I'm saying? For instance, indoor skydiving is not something people thought of 50 years ago for consumers, but we have it now. You can go pay 30, 40, $50 or whatever and do your indoor skydiving and have a good time. Eat a hot dog and drink a Coke and go home. You know what I mean? That was all based on statistical learning. Now, the third wave is AI theory and applications. This addresses the limitations of the first and second wave. So the first and second wave deal with human interactions. The third wave of AI is theory and applications making it possible for machines to contextually adapt to changing situations. Basically, AI machines will adapt to human limitations and eventually take over human capabilities, replacing human uh, limitations. The agency's diverse portfolio of fundamental and applied AI research programs is aimed at shaping a future in which AI-enabled machines serve as trusted, collaborative partners in solving problems of importance to national security. Now you see really what's going on. The third wave theory and applications of AI, these different projects pursued may include proofs of concept, pilots, novel com uh, applications of commercial technologies for defense, creation, design, development, and demonstration of technical or operational utility or combinations of the foregoing. This announcement lays out the framework of the AIE program. Forthcoming AIE opportunities will be published on the FedBiz Ops website under program announcement DARPA PA 18 02. So a PA is a program announcement. 18 mean two, meaning 2018 and 02, I think that's the second installment. That's what zero two means because they already had an installment of this earlier this year. And then they have associated images and video here may be reused according to the terms of DARPA usage policy available here. You can go to the usage policy and see how you want to use it. I'm not going to go to that right now because I don't want to get in trouble um, and lose the video. But it's a very interesting concept. I suggest you go to this website if you're interested and see, you know, if this if this is something that you want to learn more about, DARPA.mil forward slash slash news events. Like I said, this was published earlier this year in the summer. Where everybody was, you know, fucking around talking about Trump and whatever and all this other BS that's going on around the world. 
and in this country, you know, talking about Cardi B and her bullshit, Beyonce, Jay-Z, like, I give a damn. I don't watch TV like that, so I don't even know what the hell going on on TV. This is not going to be on TV. You understand? It won't be on TV. It won't be on the radio. It's not going to be on YouTube. You know, they're not going to put this article. They have videos on there, but they won't go into detail like you see in their program announcements. So I will leave you all with the link in the description box. Y'all let me know what you think in the comment section because I learned so much from you all, from your comments, your questions, your, your links. You know, shout out to everybody who sent me links. Shout out to the subscribers. I love y'all to life. Y'all doing y'all thing. You know, I see people in panels and in comments um, and chat rooms and stuff. And y'all have a lot of knowledge and information. You don't realize some of the things y'all say can trigger something in me to do a video about it. So I really appreciate that. But I'll holler at y'all the next one. Y'all enjoy your weekend. Stay safe. And always strive to learn more.